You're going to have a surface that is very smooth. We're doing detailed work, so you'll need a very smooth surface. So picking a canvas, make sure that it's very smooth. Even if you do a canvas, you're going to need a couple of coats of gesso on that, simply because of the technique that we do use. It is to your advantage. If you choose to work on a panel, which is my preference at all times, because I can really get the finest of services, uh, you can buy them pre-done. I have done so, and I still find that I have to put two or three coats on it. So I prefer to start from scratch. So I just go ahead and go to a home improvement center or a lumber yard and pick up the uh, tempered panel. And I'll get it in either eighth inch or quarter inch. Eighth inch can take you up to 16 by 20. Beyond that, up to about a 20, 24. You want to go for a quarter inch. Quarter inch will do all if you would choose to do so. We'll get into how to treat these in our next segment. You're going to be using an acrylic gesso. Gesso comes in uh, quite thick, and you don't want to work with that. You want to put in a separate jar some of the gesso and add a little bit of water at a time until you have kind of the consistency of a cream like that. And if it's too thick, when you go to work with it, you're going to end up having a hard time getting the strokes out. It's just going to be like putting paste on there. You don't want that. You'll need two four inch foam brushes. These are the brushes that will work better for you than having the hair by getting things smooth. A dish to put your gesso in. You're going to want to pour out a little bit at a time so you don't end up getting uh, little pieces and flakes of drying gesso. A paper towel that's wet laying on the table because when you're working your gesso and you're smoothing it out, you're going to use one brush to apply it and one brush to smooth it out. It's going to get a little bit loaded up with your gesso, so you're going to clean it on here and then dry it. You're not going to clean your brushes until after you're done. Then a sandpaper, a very fine sandpaper. Now this is not for sanding, this is for scuffing. When you've got your gesso on there, sometimes you get a little dimple or pimple on there and you're going to just very carefully go over the top of it and that will bring that down. When you're sanding, you don't want to push hard, you're going to make it shiny. Don't do that. Also, the canvas is done the same way that the panel is done, with one exception. When you are sanding it, it's not an exception as much as it is a warning. Don't press hard at, at all. You might press a little too hard and have to do a couple extra coats on this. But if you press too hard here, you're going to get a shiny ridge. There's a stretcher bar behind that, and it will press on it, and it will create a shiny spot. It's almost impossible to get out short of just sanding it down. And Let's just don't do it, and then we won't have that problem. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to pour out some gesso, and we're going to get started, and we're going to show you how the coats go on. It's very simple. It's a, It's a... A process that's going to take you a little while. Thus, when I do them, I usually do several at a time so I kind of build up my stock. That way you can start with one and go down the line. And once you've gotten, say, half a dozen done, you can come back and the one that it's dried, it's ready for you to take the next steps and you can just flow on through. So just think about this as a process that you can do on your own little manufacturing line. So let's get started. Remember, this isn't the pretty side, so it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be pretty. I'm only going to put the one coat on here right now. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to put two or three more coats on there. You might want to write some information on the back of it when you're done. And in that case, you would want to have a little bit cleaner surface. So that's up to you. We're just going to demonstrate the one coat. Now we're going to put the sides on too. Remember, so we're going to seal it all the way around. So that means you're going to run along the edge. When we do that, we're going to create a little bit of a lip of the gesso on the other side. We're going to have to wipe that off. We don't want that. It would probably be hidden up underneath the lip of a frame, but it's not something that you really want to mess with. So what we're going to do after we finish this, very simply, put it up this way, take the paper towel and wipe the edges down. Just that simple. Now, you let it dry. Then we'll go back over here and we'll do the same thing. Only this one is the side that's going to be the smooth one. So 
we're going to be just a little bit more careful. It's going to look very uh, transparent because obviously it is at the moment. So after we get through with this, I've got that on there. I'm going to pick up my other brush, which is dry, and I'm going to start feathering over that back and forth, just getting it as fine as I possibly can. When you do this, it's going to help dry it too. You're, you're feathering over it. It's a light touch. You're also starting to do a drying thing. You can see how it does have that transparent, but you're getting rid of a lot of the brush strokes. When that dries, is your first coat and it's going to look a little bit blotchy because it is. You can see the brown through it. This is when you take your sandpaper and stuff. A little dust or something might have gotten in there. Whatever, you're just taking down a little bump here or there. And then once you've done that, you're ready for your next coat. You're going to work yourself up to this. You want to work all the way up to there. Now, the grit on there is what you're looking for. You can even feel it on the first one, but you want more of, you want more paint on there. You want a lot thicker. So that is what you're working for. The same process. Now you're going to do this six times minimum, at least six to eight times. Your canvas, same thing. Remember what I said. Don't press hard or you'll get those little marks around where the stretcher bars are in the back. So you want to be very careful about that. And depending on how rough your canvas is when you start will determine how many different layers that you need. I went with a smooth canvas so it didn't take any more than uh, six or eight as it were. So you can do it to your own liking but you want to get it down to where it's a nice bright white and when you run your fingers over it it's just like a little bit of a grit. So now we're ready to, once we get it to this point, transfer our drawing to the surface and we're all ready to start with the painting process.